This is Unit 45. Contrition. C-O-N-T-R-I-T-I-O-N. Sadness or remorse over past wrong actions. Sincere regret. He showed no contrition for his acts, even when confronted by his victims. The vacuous look in his eyes told me that his contrition was not real. Contrition. C-O-N-T-R-I-T-I-O-N. Sadness or remorse over past wrong actions. Sincere regret. Impudent. I-M-P-U-D-E-N-T. Offensively bold, insulting, rude, presumptuous. Those impudent children, they're always talking back to their parents. The impudent sailor got a month in the brig for insulting the ship's captain. Impudent. I-M-P-U-D-E-N-T. Offensively bold, insulting, rude, presumptuous. Indolent. I-N-D-O-L-E-N-T. Averse to exertion or work. Lazy. Kathy is not completely indolent, but her tendency to work in spurts is disconcerting to her supervisor. My indolent nephew never lifts a finger to help himself. Indolent. I-N-D-O-L-E-N-T. Averse to exertion or work. Lazy. Interloper. I-N-T-E-R-L-O-P-E-R. One who intrudes or thrusts himself into the affairs of others. A meddler. We naturally view the new management as interlopers. Older children often make a new step-parent feel like an interloper. Interloper. I-N-T-E-R-L-O-P-E-R. -E -E One who intrudes or thrusts himself into the affairs of others. A meddler. Milieu, M-I-L-I-E-U, surroundings, environment. Outside his academic milieu, the professor was a fish out of water. The debonair playboy feels most at home in an opulent milieu. Milieu, M-I-L-I-E-U, surroundings, environment. Now let's review the five words you have just learned. Contrition. Sadness or remorse over past wrong actions. Sincere regret. Contrition. Impudent. Offensively bold, insulting, rude, presumptuous, impudent. Indolent. Averse to exertion or work, lazy, indolent. Interloper. One who intrudes or thrusts himself into the affairs of others. A meddler. Interloper. Milieu. Surroundings. Environment. Milieu. If you haven't mastered some of the words yet, that's fine. 
Go back and listen to this unit as often as needed. Remember, you can master these words. This is Unit 46. Nebulous. N-E-B-U-L-O-U-S. Vague or confused. Hazy. My knowledge of American history is rather nebulous since I haven't studied it recently. Judith had trouble understanding the organization's nebulous doctrines. Nebulous. N-E-B-U-L-O-U-S Vague or confused. Hazy. Odious. O-D-I-O-U-S Hateful, offensive, repulsive. That crooked politician has an odious reputation. My uncle pretended to be pious, but he was in fact an odious backstabber. Odious. O-D-I-O-U-S. Hateful, offensive, repulsive. Repast. R-E-P-A-S-T. A meal, especially a meal for a specific occasion. Our hostess provided a marvelous repast for Christmas dinner. We enjoyed a light repast after the morning swim. Repast. R-E-P-A-S-T. A meal, especially a meal for a specific occasion. Royster. R-O-I-S-T-E-R-E-R. -E -E -R. One who acts in a noisy, blustery manner. The young roisterer swaggered into the bar, ready for a fight. My cousin Jim is an intractable roisterer. He's always looking to stir things up. Roisterer. R-O-I-S-T-E-R-E-R. -E -E -R. One who acts in a noisy, blustery manner. Ascribe, A-S-C-R-I-B-E, to assign or attribute as to a cause. Never ascribe to malice what can be accounted for by incompetence. He ascribed his success to hard work and a high vocabulary. Ascribe, A-S-C-R-I-B-E, to assign or attribute as to a cause. Now, let's review the five words you have just learned. Nebulous. Vague or confused. Hazy. Nebulous. Odious. Hateful. Offensive. Repulsive. Odious. Repast. A meal especially a meal for a specific occasion. Repast. Royster. One who acts in a noisy, blustery manner. Royster. Ascribe. To assign or attribute as to a cause. Ascribe. If you haven't mastered some of the words yet, that's fine. Go back and listen to this unit as often as needed. Remember, you can master these words.
Environment is a much used word today. The physical environment, the family environment, the working environment, this is one of those words fast on its way to meaning nothing because everyone uses it to mean everything. To distinguish yourself as a master of word use amid all this imprecision, try using more specific words to take over the various meanings of overworked words like environment. Earlier, you learned the word milieu, which we define simply as surroundings or environment. But milieu is actually more precise than that. It means the atmosphere prevalent in one's social, cultural, or professional circles and normally does not refer to physical surroundings. So it makes perfect sense to use phrases like academic milieu or artistic milieu or corporate milieu. While you would not say a polluted milieu when referring to the air over Los Angeles. You know, Christina, I love to work in a high vocabulary environment. You mean a high vocabulary milieu, don't you? You're being impudent, but I must admit you're right. Let's continue with our intellectual repast of great words. This is Unit 47. Auspicious. A-U-S-P-I-C-I-O-U-S. -I -I Promising success. Favorable. Take advantage of this auspicious time to become an entrepreneur. Her auspicious first interview was a harbinger of a long, productive career with our company. Auspicious. A-U-S-P-I-C-I-O-U-S. -I Promising success. Favorable. Glower. G-L-O-W-E-R. To stare with an angry frown. Glare. As his team's deficit widened, the coach glowered intensely at the playing field. The waitress glowered at the picky diner who kept sending back his steak. Glower. G-L-O-W-E-R. To stare with an angry frown. Glare. Guile. G-U-I-L-E. Cunning trickery. Deceit. Cardinal Richelieu ruled France by guile chicanery and subterfuge behold an honest man in whom there is no guile guile g-u-i-l-e cunning trickery deceit mastic m-a-s-t-i-c glue adhesive sticky resin the hardware store clerk recommended a special mastic for furniture repair. The mastic in this can is completely hardened. Throw it out. Mastic. M-A-S-T-I-C. Glue. Adhesive. Sticky resin. Solicit. S-O-L-I-C-I-T. To ask for earnestly, to seek, to petition. Their aim is to solicit funds to elect more women senators. The affable car salesman solicited business with a smile. Solicit. S-O-L-I-C-I-T. To ask for earnestly, to seek, to petition. Now let's review the five words you have just learned. Auspicious. Promising success. Favorable. Auspicious. Glower. To stare with an angry frown, glare, 
Glower. Guile. Cunning trickery. Deceit. Guile. Mastic. Glue. Adhesive. Sticky resin. Mastic. Solicit. To ask for earnestly. To seek. To petition. Solicit. If you haven't mastered some of the words yet, that's fine. Go back and listen to this unit as often as needed. Remember, you can master these words. This is Unit 48. Vigilant. V-I-G-I-L-A-N-T. Keenly watchful, alert, wary. The vigilant sales manager kept a careful watch on our travel expenses. My accountant keeps a vigilant eye on frequent changes in the tax law. Vigilant. V I G I L A N T. Keenly watchful, alert, wary. Voracious. V O R A C I O U S. Having an insatiable appetite for an activity or pursuit. Ravenous. My boss is a voracious reader. He always has a book in hand. Despite her voracious appetite, she never puts on weight. Voracious. V O R A C I O U S. Having an insatiable appetite for an activity or pursuit. Ravenous. Archaic. A R C H A I C. Old fashioned, ancient, outdated. We finally updated our archaic accounting system. The old gentleman's archaic manners were charming, but out of step with the times. Archaic. A R C H A I C. Old fashioned, ancient, outdated. Atoll. A T O L L. A ring shaped coral reef nearly or entirely surrounding a lagoon within. The atoll's lagoon was ideal for scuba diving. I'd love to retire to a South Pacific atoll. Atoll. A T O L L. A ring shaped coral reef nearly or entirely surrounding a lagoon within. Impetuous. I M P E T U O U S. Tending to act on sudden impulse. Hasty. Rash. Novice gamblers often make impetuous decisions. Don's impetuous remark may well cost him his job. Impetuous. I M P E T U O U S. Tending to act on sudden impulse, hasty, rash. Now let's review the five words you have just learned. Vigilant. Keenly watchful, alert, wary, vigilant. Voracious. Having an insatiable appetite for an activity or pursuit. Ravenous.
voracious. Archaic. Old fashioned, ancient, outdated, archaic. Atoll. A ring-shaped coral reef nearly or entirely surrounding a lagoon within. Atoll. Impetuous. Tending to act on sudden impulse. Hasty. Rash. Impetuous. If you haven't mastered some of the words yet, that's fine. Go back and listen to this unit as often as needed. Remember, you can master these words. Believe it or not, a kind of bird watching is the origin of one of our new words. The Romans believed that certain kinds of bird behavior were harbingers of success, while others were portents of disaster. One of these prophets was called an auspex, which means, literally, someone who looks at birds. The plural of auspex is auspices. Is this beginning to sound familiar? If the bird's behavior was taken as a favorable sign, it was said that conditions were auspicious for beginning the new enterprise. And, of course, a bad sign indicated that the present time was inauspicious and that projects undertaken then would be doomed to failure. Today we still use auspicious and inauspicious to mean basically the same things. We also still have the word auspices, which means patronage or favorable supervision. Thus, a campaign to sell a new product will usually begin under the auspices of the marketing department. Or an art museum will operate under the auspices of a state agency or art society. Believe it or not, Van, we're halfway through Wordmaster. I think it's an auspicious time to begin Volume 7, don't you? One of the words I love most happens to be the word love. I use it often, but I don't say it foolishly or flippantly. It's too important a word to waste. One basic definition of love as a verb is to value or look for the good. So if you love someone, you look for the good in them. Love is an active emotion, it's not static. Love is one of the few experiences in life that we can best keep by giving it away. Communicating love, then, is the act of demonstrating value for and looking for the good in another person. I've taken the letters L-O-V-E and given them each a definition to describe what it means to me. L is for listen. To love someone is to listen unconditionally to his or her values and needs without prejudice. O is for overlook. To love someone is to overlook the flaws and the faults in favor of looking for the good. V is for voice. To love someone is to voice your approval of him or her on a frequent and regular basis. There's no substitute for honest encouragement, positive reinforcement, and praise. And E is for effort. To love someone is to make a constant effort to be there for that person in person, to spend the time, to make the sacrifice, and to go the extra mile to show your interest. Nothing you could ever buy for the significant adults and children in your life will ever mean as much as the activities you share and the time you spend being with them. That's one of the most important communication messages I've learned in all of my life. The opening minutes of each day should include positive words and actions. Never greet anyone with a pressing question or complaint. Sign off each day with words of love and encouragement. Bedtime is the most important communication time between parents and children, and in today's time-starved world, where homes have become hotels and pit stops, bedtime may be the only quality communication time available beyond meal time and while commuting from one activity to another. As you master the words in this program, be generous in your words of praise, encouragement, optimism, and love. 
And although this program is all about words, we also can say in a very few words what some people find difficult to understand in a lifetime of making excuses after the fact. The secret of intimacy is that a touch is worth a thousand words. Use all your senses to keep in touch with those you love. This is Unit 49. Obdurate. O-B-D-U-R-A-T-E. Stubborn. Hard-headed. Unbending. The worst threats of punishment could not sway the obdurate criminal. The obdurate farmer would not change his archaic methods. Obdurate. O B. D-U-R-A-T-E Stubborn, hard-headed, unbending. Parity P-A-R-I-T-Y Like state or degree Equality, equivalence The growing parity between the NFL and the AFL led to their merger. The parity in firepower made the battle a standoff. Parity. P-A-R-I-T-Y. Like state or degree. Equality. Equivalence. Paucity. P-A-U-C-I-T-Y. Smallness of number or quantity. Shortage. Scarcity. A paucity of cultural events makes our town so dull. The paucity of women CEOs is disconcerting to feminists. Paucity. P-A-U-C-I-T-Y. Smallness of number or quantity. Shortage. Scarcity. Transgress. T-R-A-N-S-G. R-E-S-S -S. To go beyond limits To violate a law or command Those who frequently transgress the tax code are usually caught Our highly respected CEO never transgresses ethical boundaries Transgress T-R-A-N-S-G-R-E-S-S -S -S. To go beyond limits to violate a law or command. Travail. T R A V A I L. Strenuous physical or mental labor, pain, anguish. We produce the annual report at the last minute after much travail. Men have no idea what the travail of childbirth is like. Travail. T-R-A-V-A-I-L. Strenuous physical or mental labor. Pain. Anguish. Now let's review the five words you have just learned. We will use our standard process, which you know well. Say each word and pause. During the pause, say the meaning of the word as you remember it. Then we will give the meaning of the word. Obdurate. Stubborn, hard-headed, unbending. Obdurate. Parity. Like state or degree. Equality. Equivalence. Parity. Paucity. Smallness of number or quantity. Shortage. Scarcity. Paucity. Transgress.
to go beyond limits, to violate a law or command, transgress. Travail Strenuous physical or mental labor, pain, anguish, travail. If you haven't mastered some of the words yet, that's fine. Go back and listen to this unit as often as needed. Remember, you can master these words. This is Unit 50. One. W-A-N. Colorless. Of a sickly hue. Pale. Pallid. You look so wan. You should get out in the sun more often. After a long illness, her face took on a tired, wan appearance. Wan. W-A-N. Colorless, of a sickly hue, pale, pallid. Commiserate, C-O-M-M-I-S-E-R-A-T-E. -E. To share in another's sorrow or disappointment, sympathy, pity. We commiserated with Hank after he was laid off. No need to commiserate, he said. I'll be fine. Commiserate. C-O-M-M-I-S-E-R-A-T-E. -E. To share in another's sorrow or disappointment. Sympathy. Pity. Contravene. C-O-N-T-R-A-V-E-N-E. To go against or deny, violate, disobey. Saddam's invasion of Kuwait contravened international law. Mrs. Simpson was a tough teacher. We dared not contravene her rules. Contravene. C-O-N-T-R-A-V-E-N-E. -E. To go against or deny, violate, disobey. Derogate, D-E-R-O-G-A-T-E, -E. to put down, to detract, to belittle. Your impudent remarks derogate my authority. How dare you make statements which derogate my client's reputation? Derogate, D-E-R-O-G-A-T-E, -E. to put down. To detract, to belittle. Discern, D I S C E R N. To perceive as with sight or mind, to distinguish. We discerned good character behind the vagrant's dirty appearance. A sociopath cannot discern right from wrong. Discern. D-I-S-C-E-R-N To perceive as with sight or mind. To distinguish. Now let's review the five words you have just learned. One. Colorless, of a sickly hue, pale, pallid, wan. Commiserate. To share in another's sorrow or disappointment. Sympathy, pity, commiserate. Contravene. To go against or deny, 
violate, disobey, contravene. Derogate. To put down, to detract, to belittle, derogate. Discern. To perceive as with sight or mind. To distinguish, discern. If you haven't mastered some of the words yet, that's fine. Go back and listen to this unit as often as needed. Remember, you can master these words. Remember, every time you learn a new word, you are probably set to learn several related words as well. Right now, for example, you can quickly and easily expand your word knowledge by learning one or two new words related to each of the five words in the last two units. Settle into your super learning mode as we spin off five quick new words. Obdurate. O B D U R A T E. Stubborn, hard headed, unbending. Obduracy. O B D U R A C Y. The state or quality of being stubborn. The criminal's obduracy made him resist the worst threats of punishment. Transgress. T R A N S G R E S S. To go beyond the limits, to violate a law or command. Transgression. T R A N S G R E S S I O N. A violation of a law or command. His transgression of the drunk driving law landed him in jail. Contravene. C-O-N-T-R-A-V-E-N-E. -E. To go against, to violate, to disobey. Contravention. C-O-N-T-R-A-V-E-N-T-I-O-N. -E A violation, an act of disobedience. Saddam's contravention of international law created a crisis. Derogate. D-E-R-O-G-A-T-E. -E. To put down, to detract. Derogation. D-E-R-O-G-A-T-I-O-N. Detraction. An act of putting something down. Your derogation of my authority can't be tolerated. Discern. D-I-S-C-E-R-N. To perceive. To distinguish. Discernment. D-I-S-C-E-R-N-M-E-N-T. The ability to perceive or distinguish. Her tremendous discernment about personalities always helped her hire the right person. This is Unit 51. Ponderous. P O N D E R. O U S, having great weight, unwieldy. That ponderous dictionary is so hard to use, I can hardly lift it. He gave such a ponderous speech that everyone fell asleep. Ponderous, P O N D E R O U S, having great weight, unwieldy.
shiftless. S-H-I-F-T-L-E-S-S. -S. Showing lack of energy or ambition. Lazy, irresponsible. My shiftless relatives refuse to work or go to school. The work ethic condemns the shiftless person. Shiftless. S-H-I-F-T-L-E-S-S. -S -S. Showing lack of energy or ambition. Lazy, irresponsible. Amity. A-M-I-T-Y. Friendship or peaceful relations. Harmony. In the last century, the U.S. and Great Britain have experienced continuous amity. Our affable boss works hard to preserve amity among our staff. Amity. A-M-I-T-Y. Friendship or peaceful relations. Harmony. Germain. G-E-R-M-A-N-E. -E. Related to what is being considered. Pertinent. Relevant. Football is not a germane topic at a Shakespeare seminar. Your presentation was really germane to our concerns. Germane. G-E-R-M-A-N-E. -E. Related to what is being considered. Pertinent. Relevant. Jibe. G-I-B-E. To utter jeers or derisive remarks. To mock. To ridicule. The cruel children jibed their classmate for his simple mistakes. The protesters jibed the city council at every opportunity. Jibe. G-I-B-E. To utter jeers or derisive remarks. To mock. To ridicule. Now let's review the five words you have just learned. Ponderous. Having great weight. Unwieldy. Ponderous. Shiftless. Showing lack of energy or ambition. Lazy. Irresponsible. Shiftless. Amity. Friendship or peaceful relations. Harmony. Amity. Germain. Related to what is being considered. Pertinent. Relevant. Germain. Jibe. To utter jeers or derisive remarks. To mock. To ridicule. Jibe. If you haven't mastered some of the words yet, that's fine. Go back and listen to this unit as often as needed. Remember, you can master these words. This is Unit 52. Inimitable. I N I M I T A B L E. Unique. Matchless. One of a kind. There is no mistaking Sinatra's inimitable style. No architect has reproduced the inimitable beauty of the Parthenon. Inimitable. I N I M I T A B L E. 
unique, matchless, one of a kind. Itinerant. I T I N E R A N T. Traveling from place to place, wandering. The itinerant peddler went from town to town. Nomads are itinerant herdsmen. Itinerant. I T I N E R A N T. Traveling from place to place. Wandering. Mellifluous. M E L L I F L U O U S. Flowing sweetly and smoothly. Honey voiced. The mellifluous voice of Bing Crosby has charmed millions. Jane's mellifluous cello playing was the envy of the other musicians. Mellifluous. M E L L I F L U O U S. Flowing sweetly and smoothly. Honey voiced. Morbid. M O R B I D. Preoccupation with unwholesome matters. Sick. Gruesome. Hypochondriacs have a morbid interest in illness. He needs to get over his morbid fascination with death. Morbid. M O R B I D. Preoccupation with unwholesome matters. Sick. Gruesome. Predilection. P R E D I L E C T I O N. A special liking, a preference, or bias. His predilection for football leads him to spend fall weekends in front of the television. Sharon has a predilection for intellectual boyfriends, though she is the athletic type. Predilection. P R E D I L E C T I O N. A special liking, a preference, or bias. Now, let's review the five words you have just learned. Inimitable. Unique. Matchless. One of a kind. Inimitable. Itinerant. Traveling from place to place. Wandering. Itinerant. Mellifluous. Flowing sweetly and smoothly. Honey voiced. Mellifluous. Morbid. Preoccupation with unwholesome matters. Sick. Gruesome. Morbid. Predilection. A special liking. A preference or bias. Predilection. If you haven't mastered some of the words yet, that's fine. Go back and listen to this unit as often as needed. Remember, you can master these words. Remember, you add punch to your verbal arsenal when you use literal words in figurative ways. Take ponderous, for example. It's from the Latin word pondus, which means a heavy load. We use it literally to refer to heavy objects, which are clumsy to carry. As in, that ponderous grand piano was a bear to haul out of here. And ponderous 
used figuratively, is a tremendous word for describing speeches, books, articles, or reports that are either heavy with content or clumsy in expression. It can be a compliment in a situation where what's needed is a ton of research and evidence, as in, His ponderous 3,000-page report contains the most complete information available on the techniques of brain surgery. But most often, ponderous is used negatively to convey that someone's expression This is Unit 53. Pugnacious. P-U-G-N-A-C-I-O-U-S. Prone to quarrels or fights. Belligerent. Pugnacious hockey players spend a lot of time in the penalty box. A pugnacious style is good for a lawyer, but bad for a sales representative. Pugnacious, P-U-G-N-A-C-I-O-U-S. Prone to quarrels or fights, belligerent. Rectitude, R-E-C-T-I-T-U-D-E. Uprightness in principles and conduct. Honesty, high moral character. Her moral rectitude would not permit the judge to take a bribe. Rectitude is a must for any true leader. Rectitude. R-E-C-T-I-T-U-D-E. Uprightness in principles and conduct. Honesty. High moral character. Rococo. R-O-C-O. C-O. Over-elaborate style. Ornate. Fancy. Showy. Rococo decoration doesn't belong in a corporate office. I prefer simple furniture, but my husband loves Rococo. Rococo. R-O-C-O-C-O. Over-elaborate style. Ornate. Fancy. Showy. Aficionado. A F I C I O N A D O. Devotee or enthusiast. A fan, a follower, an admirer. A real high tech aficionado keeps up with the latest software developments. My boy is quite a Red Sox aficionado. He can tell you the batting average of every player on the team. Aficionado, A-F-I-C-I-O-N-A-D-O. Devotee or enthusiast, a fan, a follower, an admirer. Seed, C-E-D-E. -E. To give up or surrender something. The government did not cede the territory to the rebels. Our company decided to seed an old product line to the new subsidiary. Seed. C-E-D-E. -E. To give up or surrender something. Now let's review the five words you have just learned. Pugnacious. Prone to quarrels or fights. Belligerent. Pugnacious. Rectitude. Uprightness in principles and conduct. Honesty. High moral character. Rectitude. Rococo. Over elaborate style, ornate, fancy, showy. Rococo.
aficionado. A devotee or enthusiast, a fan, a follower, an admirer, aficionado. Seed. To give up or surrender something. Seed. If you haven't mastered some of the words yet, that's fine. Go back and listen to this unit as often as needed. Remember, you can master these words. This is Unit 54. Credence. C-R-E-D-E-N-C-E. -E -E. Belief based upon evidence. Legitimacy. Testimonials lend credence to the claims for the new product. I don't attach any credence to your claim to be the King of England. Credence. C-R-E-D-E-N-C-E. -E -E. Belief based upon evidence. Legitimacy. Debase. D-E-B-A-S-E. -E. To lower in character or quality. Degrade. Don't debase your high quality product by false advertising. Let's not debase our wonderful language by misusing it. Debase. D-E-B-A-S-E. -E. To lower in character or quality. Degrade. Foment. F-O-M-E-N-T. To stir up or instigate. Provoke. Arouse. Revolutionaries like to foment resentment among working people. Rumors about layoffs fomented fear and uneasiness. Foment. F-O-M-E-N-T. To stir up or instigate, provoke, arouse. Forbearance. F-O-R-B-E-A-R a-N-C-E. Patience, tolerance, self-control. People will respect you if you show forbearance when criticized. I'm usually patient, but my forbearance with my teenage son is wearing thin. Forbearance. F-O-R-B-E-A-R-A-N-C-E. -E. Patience, tolerance. Self-control. Jocose. J-O-C-O-S-E. Jolly. Joking. Humorous. Her jocose manner made her very approachable. Begin your presentation with a few jocose remarks to loosen people up. Jocose. J O. C-O-S-E Jolly Joking Humorous Now, let's review the five words you have just learned. Credence Belief based upon evidence. Legitimacy. Credence. Debase. To lower in character or quality. Degrade. Debase. Foment. To stir up or instigate, provoke, arouse. 
foment. Forbearance. Patience, tolerance, self-control, forbearance. Jocose. Jolly, joking, humorous, jocose. If you haven't mastered some of the words yet, that's fine. Go back and listen to this unit as often as needed. Remember, you can master these words. Pugnacious is a word bristling with competitive power. It's from the Latin verb pugnari, which means to fight. Thus, pugilism is the art of professional fighting or boxing. And a pugilist, or pug, is someone who fights for a living. But you don't have to be a boxer to be pugnacious. Pugnacious can describe anyone who is scrappy and feisty, inclined to fight rather than to give in or cooperate when there is a disagreement. And because pugnacious sounds a lot like tenacious, it carries the additional nuance of stick to itiveness, a never say die attitude. If your job demands that you argue for a living in a rough and tumble atmosphere like criminal law or labor negotiation, being pugnacious will usually be an advantage. But remember that pugnacious is harsher than aggressive. In a marketing situation in which you would go after a client aggressively, you would offend him if you were pugnacious. Your approach should be bold and assertive, but you are still trying for a win-win situation. You want to come to agreement. The client is not the enemy, but the prize. If a competitor is stepping on your toes, however, and it's time to take off the gloves and go after him, a pugnacious approach is called for. So, be pugnacious with your opponents, aggressive with your goals, and assertive with your allies. This is Unit 55. Ranker. R-A-N-C-O-R. -R. Spitefulness. Bitterness. Ill will. The debate was lively, and there was no rancor involved. It's hard not to feel rancor towards a competitor who recruits your best people. Rancor. R-A-N. C-O-R. Spitefulness. Bitterness. Ill will. Vex. V-E-X. To irritate by small annoyances. To frustrate. Don't vex a client by not returning phone calls. This project vexes me to no end because I just can't get a grip on it. Vex. V-E-X. To irritate by small annoyances. To frustrate. Burgeon. B-U-R-G-E-O-N. To grow suddenly. To flourish. Our hometown is burgeoning into an industrial giant. Their love for each other burgeoned after a second honeymoon. Burgeon, B-U-R-G-E-O-N, to grow quickly, to flourish. Distend, D-I-S-T-E-N-D, to expand by pressure from within, to stretch, to swell. Overeating will distend your stomach. Don't distend your speech with needless anecdotes. Distend. D-I-S-T-E-N-D. -E to expand by pressure from within. To stretch. To swell. Federation. F-E-D-E. -E 
R A T I O N. Joining of two or more states or groups. Alliance. Union. Local labor unions formed a nationwide federation. American manufacturers entered a federation to fight foreign competition. Federation. F E D E R A T I O N. Joining of two or more states or groups. Alliance. Union. Now let's review the five words you have just learned. Ranker. Spitefulness. Bitterness. Ill will. Ranker. Vex. To irritate by small annoyances. To frustrate. Vex. Virgin. To grow suddenly. To flourish. Virgin. Distend. To expand by pressure from within. To stretch. To swell. Distend. Federation. Joining of two or more states or groups. Alliance. Union. Federation. If you haven't mastered some of the words yet, that's fine. Go back and listen to this unit as often as needed. Remember, you can master these words. This is Unit 56. Intimation. I-N-T-I-M-A-T-I-O-N. Information given indirectly. A hint. An implication. From his intimations at our last meeting, I think Davis favors our bid. The old sailor's intimation led us to the treasure. Intimation. I-N-T-I-M-A. T I O N. Information given indirectly. A hint. An implication. Inviolate. I N V I O L A T E. Free from being violated. Uninjured. Intact. Unharmed. Though we bent a little in the negotiation, I think we left our basic principles inviolate. Somehow, his honesty is inviolate after all these years in politics. Inviolate. I-N-V-I-O-L-A-T-E. Free from being violated. Uninjured. Intact. Unharmed. Kowtow. K-O-W-T-O-W. -O -W. To grovel. To show excessive respect. I've got too much self-respect to kowtow to a tyrant. A good leader doesn't want you to kowtow, but only to give him the respect he deserves. Kowtow. K-O-W-T-O-W. -O -W. To grovel. To show excessive respect. Luminary. L-U-M-I-N-A-R-Y. A shining example. A person of great stature in his or her field. Mother Teresa is a luminary in the field of social service. 
the student orchestra played with a luminary from the professional music world. Luminary L-U-M-I-N-A-R-Y A shining example. A person of great stature in his or her field. Panache P A N A C H E A dashing style or flamboyant manner flair Muhammad Ali was a boxer with tremendous panache A good trial lawyer combines professional panache with wise preparation Panache P A N A C H E a dashing style or flamboyant manner, flair. Now, let's review the five words you have just learned. Intimation. Information given indirectly, a hint, an implication, intimation. Inviolate. Free from being violated, uninjured, intact, unharmed, inviolate. Kowtow. To grovel, to show excessive respect, kowtow. Luminary. A shining example, a person of great stature in his or her field, luminary. Panache. A dashing style or flamboyant manner, flair, panache. If you haven't mastered some of the words yet, that's fine. Go back and listen to this unit as often as needed. Remember, you can master these words. Kowtow comes directly into English from Chinese. In the days of the emperors, to kowtow meant, quite literally, to knock one's head on the ground, that is, to make a prostration before the ruler or a nobleman. It came into Western languages as a very graphic term for showing a servile attitude towards a feared or respected person. Some great synonyms for kowtow include gravel, fawn, and toady. So the next time you want to show your disgust with servile flattery, you could say, I refuse to kowtow to Alex, even if he is the boss. If he were a real leader, he wouldn't want me to fawn all over him. Susan and Frank may grovel in the dust at his feet every time he raises his voice, but I won't toady for anyone. Don't you think this sounds a bit pugnacious? No, just assertive. You can show respect without abasing yourself. Said with panache. You know, we're 280 words richer now. I can't wait for volume 8.